Welcome back to another Linux Gaming Cast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with this week. Team Blue talks about their upcoming discrete GPU that will absolutely support Linux. An artifact is out, but the natives, they're kind of cranky. Charlie Murder gets an update pretty much a day after we couldn't get it to work. And do you want to play strategy games over email? Well, I mean, you, you can. An overzealous dev removes a bunch of Steam keys, reminding everyone that you don't own anything on Steam. And Basemark releases a new version of its GPU benchmark, um, because apparently Talos Principle is not good enough for everyone. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I don't know. Leaders. I'm not allowed to install uh, it. <laughs> yeah, I'm Vince Stone. That's Jordan Swing, and that's most definitely not Pedro Mateus joining us. What? It's not? You know him. You love him. The Jersey boy himself on the island. That's one Mike TN. Hey, what's up, man? Long time, no Hi. show. Yeah, that has been quite a while. But here we are. I know. Right back in that same old rut again. It is kind of brilliant. We, fin we kind finally of made it. <laughs> we made it. It's, uh, oh, we're also on Twitch. Oh, by the way, no one under any circumstances, do not tweet us. Don't. Okay. Good. I'm no, glad we got that don't. covered. Don't do it. It only works through Google+. Plus. Yes. Uh, RIP G+. Plus. Hey, before we get started, we'd like to see what's going on in each other's life organs. I was going to take Frank Christmas shopping today, but uh, by the time I got home, it had rained all day, and people get stupid when it rains, so I decided to avoid that nightmare. What about you, Jordan? Um, well, I've, I've been I've been keeping busy over the week. Uh, I was doing planning for that RPG stream we did on Thursday. I set up the thing to do the Twitch YouTube simultaneous broadcast, build the job applications. Some I'm, I'm I'm just a busy bee. Let's keep keep keeping occupied. Mm. What, 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 what what about you, Mike? In the I want to say year since we've seen you, what have you right. been up to? <laughs> nothing, nothing at all. You, you uh, didn't even though, move. If you uh, if you try to boot off of a degraded raid, you're gonna have a bad time. That's that's the summary of my week. Ooh. What kind of raid? What kind of raid? MD, just software raid. No, I, I, I mean, give, give, give me a number between one to Z. <laughs> what, what, one and seven? Oh, just raid five. <laughs> okay, okay. Mm. Could have used you last night, man. Could have used you last night. I mean, the other uh, team could have, anyways. Oh. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, we probably could have used hey, you on thanks, the Windows Jordan, Travis. Thanks. Yeah, the I mean, I mean, the horse knows way too much about Windows trivia. We probably should have roped them into Nerd Jeopardy. It's the Steam Linux update. Oh, All right. So, so, so uh, David Tennant. David Tennant. What? They don't. They don't. They don't want to go. No, man. What? Valve doesn't want triple A developers to go. Man, new revenue share tiers and other updates to the distribution. This kind of rolled out uh, very... Whoa, what just happened to the show notes? I think someone middle clicked. Uh-huh. That have been me? Yeah, you kind of jacked all that up. Anyway. Hey, that's our first train wreck of the night. You're welcome, guys. Oh, <laughs> Control Z for the win. We're nailing it. Um, <clears throat> check it out. Yes. Basically, what Valve's doing here, they're trying to stop AAA developers from jumping ship and creating their own services. We've seen a lot of them test the waters. Uh, indie developers... Turns out, not so happy about this. They have a little bit of a problem. Uh, this one's from PC Gamers. All this business in our show notes, uh, the revenue splits, uh, they do favor the big budget games, and indie devs aren't happy. Uh, this latest update also allows developers to share their metrics. It's got some GDPR BS in there, but brass tax on this. Brass tax is the standard 30% cut is going to scale down, not to like normal numbers, but it's going from like 75 to 25. Once your game hits a measly $10 million, then from 80 to 20, if it goes over 50 mil. So, uh, what do you think? Do you think that's going to be enough to stop everyone, the developers and publishers of the big houses? Is it going to get anyone back on steam or is it going to kind of stem anyone from thinking about it? I don't know. Maybe. It seems it seems it seems like it might be a little too low case of too little too late. Um, I I mean basically basically what you're doing is you're saying we're 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 going to cut the low end of the cut that we take in exchange for a larger chunk of the high end maybe. Mm -hmm. 
Um, <clears throat> it, uh, it and, makes and, no and, sense. And, yeah, your 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 epics and your EAs and your whatever won't care about this. Um, I'm sure I, the epics and the EAs are the ones that are pushing for it. I, I mean, yeah, they're. I mean, they, they get it's a it's a reduced cut. The more money your game makes, mm-hmm. so. I, I mean, but, like for the for the one or two indie games that go huge, it's probably great. But it's it's it's, it's like a, it's like a flat tax thing. As the the more money you make, the less it affects you. Um, well, this is true. I mean, you got to think that's a big chunk of coin, man. Um, yeah, ten, like thirty percent of ten mil. Hmm. You know, that, that, we, that's that's I, a spicy meatball. Well, I kind of get it. You know, the indie developers think like, nothing's really changing for them. But it kind they're of realizing makes, what a bad deal they're getting now. Getting they're a bad like, deal, I, but I can not, go to itch.io and just give them whatever percentage I want. You can, and they can do that. But if they're going to be on Steam, you can't really say they're going to get the visibility anymore. That hasn't been a case for a long time. But they're going to yeah. get the infrastructure, they get the refund, they're going to get the payment processing, and you know that business that might Steamworks, be Steamworks. You get all of Steamworks, right? Steam. You're going to get that integration. So. Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah, I, I, I mean, Val, Valve has done a good job of, like, encouraging people to stick with Steam from the technical side, but from the business side, it's still not looking that great. Um, Especially, I, they really need to somehow convince these other big AAA companies that using their infrastructure is cheaper than building their own. I don't, know, I don't know if but, 20% but, 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 is quite but, low but, enough for that yet. But, but but then but even then you get sort of the corporate the corporate response to that is, well now we have exclusive control over it and we can implement our own pay to win strategies and blah 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 that wouldn't otherwise be supported via <coughs> Steam. Well, you're and, also hey, looking at Valve the and you say absolute price of the infrastructure is getting cheaper and cheaper though. Yeah. I I, I and I, and I mean like if 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 you, if you if you scale it properly then yeah, you it, it it becomes part of a business ex- expense. It's it might be nicer to lump it onto Steam, but again, it's it's corporate. It's corporate think. It doesn't follow actual logic. It follows weird corporate logic. It's a thing. I, I do believe Steam kind of blinked a little bit when Discord's like, "Hey, we're going to give this a shot." I'm like, ooh, then for like no far lesser Gog's doing their Galaxy Windows only client Dynafire Gog. Um, unless I need to buy something for you for the data files for an old game. Um, <laughs> to put into DOSBox. Right. Scum VM. So, anyway, Steam VR. What's new? All right. Well, um, we got we got a bit of an update. This is from uh, November 27th this week. And if, you, if, if we want to play just the Control F Linux game, uh, they have a fix for uh, RadV. If you've been using, uh, what, was, what was it? Um, Async Reprojection on your AMD video card, uh, you get saved a crash now. Um, there's lots of input and compositor fixes that are just like generally applying to everything. What I was looking for, though, is one of, one of the big selling points of the Protons was, hey, your VR games would work. So I'm curious to see what sort of Proton notes are going to be showing up in these later on. I'm um, not entirely convinced that Proton is going to make a huge difference with VR. Um, the latency requirements are so low and the frame rate requirements are so high that so, so anything I, 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 other than like a native Vulcan is probably not going to be good enough. So, 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 so I have a piece of anecdotal evidence mm-hmm. you can take, you can, you can make of this what you will. My buddy played through super hot through the entirety of super hot VR through proton and said there were no issues. So, well, I, I can't wait. I actually have, um, my VR setup is back in Vermont, and over Christmas break, we're going to uh, mm-hmm. be giving that another try with Linux. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because because I mean, with the with the with the DXVK, like the overhead isn't too bad. Um, if you if you if you have a if you have a system that can push VR, it's possible that you might be able to do it through Proton too. Theoretically, um, yeah, man, I definitely want you to give that a try and hopefully uh, record it. We we we, we need we need the we we need the multi camera we need we need, we need we evidence empty. we need to see someone Vodka. throwing a controller through ah, the window or tripping work. over the fireplace or something. Oh, oh yes. that 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 would be great. We strap a GoPro on empty and then we just sort of follow him around. <laughs> Bottle of vodka, VR goggles, and a GoPro strapped to the top of his head. It'll be brilliant. Hey man, uh, like we tried to play Charlie Murder the other night and it didn't work out so well. It didn't. Apparently, apparently, though, Jan Ethan Flippity Jibbity Bo Lee has been keeping his uh, his Linux updates, or at least the FNA updates, in this one thread under uh, the Steam forums. 
And apparently uh, on November twenty, uh, November twenty sixth, twenty ninth, and thirtieth, there were some uh, there were some fixes. Apparently they um, apparently Flibit uh, migrated this to the latest master version of FNA after going to uh, two oh nine, and apparently that didn't fix any issues. So they decided to just build from head. Um, what else did I put down? Um, yeah, uh, apparently. I mean, now now that it is on FNA Master, I'm curious if like that actually solves some of the issues because I know Ethan's been rewriting large swaths um, for for, for, for for performance and accuracy's sake. Yeah, uh, one one thing one thing that did kind of pique my interest was apparently an earlier build Charlie Murder didn't like when your mouse had too many buttons. <laughs> so, well, didn't like it's, the OpenOffice.org mouse. No, it's like those Logitech mice where it has like the like the nine grid of of buttons on the side where like Man, the forward and back buttons right. usually I, are. I almost bought one of those alien butt probe fucking mice today because the it World was of a, Warcraft mouse. It was yeah. it was a Logitech <laughs> that looked like the damn spaceship, but it was it was regularly like eighty and it was like thirty five. I was like, nope, Ooh. I couldn't live with myself. I yeah. Couldn't do it. But do hey, it. man, I'm really glad that they keep that updated, and hopefully the next time we usually take a. Roughly a year between attempts at playing it, it won't eat us so much shit like it has maybe, in the previous two occasions. Maybe. Mm. Uh, g- give give it a shot now. There was an update as of, uh, I want to say, yes, yeah, yesterday. So, who knows? Um, Everyone's favorite topic, talking shit about developers. Ah, uh, yes. yes. The urban warfare, or urban war defense. What a, what a chump. He apparently... Uh, Deleted all the keys that he sold to Indy Gala, including ones that people had redeemed and people had uh, not redeemed and had been resold through other services. And oh, what a mess he created. Uh, this is a reminder that even once you redeem your Steam keys, they can still be revoked on you by an overzealous dev. So apparently, uh, this has all been sorted out now. The guy didn't maybe respond as well as he could have, but. Um, everyone who lost their copy of the game got it back eventually. The lesson here being, don't mass ban your keys. Well, it, it, it wasn't even that. So we, we mm. talked a bit about this last, last week. week. Yeah. Um, and the, the, the story was still unfolding. And as, as, as a, as of like, what was it? Monday or something? Um, Monday, Monday or Tuesday, homeboy just started banning people who were talking shit about him on the forums. Um, and that, you know, suppressing discourse about your, your hot button issue is a great way to get people on your side, right? Um, Especially when it's really obvious that he just, like, jumped the gun and got a little bit overzealous and then didn't want to fess up to, like... Well, he jumped the gun. Oops. Indy Gala didn't pay me. And Indy Gala's like, you know what, Stufu, here's the receipt where we paid you. And he's like, And as, as much as I don't like Indy Gala, they... They don't have a reputation for not paying their debts. Right. Mm-hmm. And, but it's not surprising to see. This has happened before and it will happen again. It's like mm. they're going down the playbook. And I was like, oh, now we're at the uh, banning descent portion of this story. That will play out predictably. Mm. Indeed. Well, yeah. I guess in the end, everyone got their, their keys back and they're happy. But uh, like, mass banning 20,000 keys. Bad How not to PR 101. Yeah, it's, oh, it's, 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 it's an emotional roller coaster, all right. There are mm. highs, there are lows. Uh, here, here's the thing, though. I bet you, I bet you that the the people who got their uh, got their games back are just gonna be like, you know what? I don't, I don't want to play this anymore. This, yeah, this, I don't really this like spoiled. this game. Anyway. Seriously, <laughs> you, you got to look at it like this. This game had two reviews after being out for over a year, so nothing of value was fucking lost. All right, I got to talk about this because I'm really excited to announce that Artifact. Um, I genuinely give zero fucks about card games, but it is out. It is there, and it's a mixed bag, mixed bag to reviews because the verdict. And I'm like, eh, well, maybe we don't like it. They don't like that twenty dollars price tag. Well, really, they might not have necessarily a problem with that. It's that you got to keep giving them money if you want to compete. And it's Vulcan only. I've seen some people going, Rah, I don't know, and it's like, man, come on, get get a computer made in the last I don't know decade, but. I think, you know, I, I don't know anything about card games and I'm going to get told by Jordan and how this is going to play out. But I think like in a world where Hearthstone completely free to play, this is going to kind of eat all the dicks. 
And that's where most of these complaints seem to be uh, when I was going through the reviews is there's no way of for me to earn new cards in game. And that, yeah, like, like Ben said, that is, that is the thing that Hearthstone does and it keeps people playing because, you know, you know, they, they can, they can at least remain semi-competitive without having to dump money. Now, the asking price for the cards isn't actually too bad. It's two bucks a booster pack for 10 cards. Magic is five, five, six bucks for 15. So this is about on par with what you'd be paying for a meat space card game. Except in um, meat space, you get to actually own the cards. Um, okay. I mean, it's, it's, it's not like you own anything on Steam anyways, as was previously mentioned. I just want to, I just want to say congratulations, Valve. You announced a release date a month ago and you stuck to it. I think this is this is noteworthy. You 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 get the golf clap for that. Just the uh, number three isn't involved, so they're okay. I, I mean that, that that that's that was the top post of their support forums for a while. <laughs> um, here 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 here's here's the thing though. Give, given the nature of the mercurial nature of games these days, and how you can have a game that is very ill received on launch, and then a year later they're like, "Hey, we have the remastered version." Um, I'm curious if Valve is going to walk back their stance on, "Okay, well now you can actually earn cards through the gameplay if if uh, Artifact isn't making enough cash." I'm half tempted to do the deep dive. I'm, I'm. This, this is what I want to point out to everyone at home during the pre pre super shows, and we were talking about this, and Jordan's like, "Nay, I will not buy this." then maybe, maybe four four and a half minutes later it's like listen i might try this and i i know five minutes all. after that it was like maybe i'll spend a hundred bucks on he, it that's you know. exactly what caught me off guard i was like so you just buy the game and try it and don't worry and give them any money and jordan's like oh fuck no i've got throw like a benjamin look, look, on it look, the thing is worth listen, doing look. it's worth doing right Listen, I've pl- I've played Magic before. I know how this, this sh- I know how this shit works. You don't get anywhere if you don't spend money. Um, that's that's the thing. I've been itching for something like this. I don't want to go back to Magic because I've been scorned by that too many times. This might be the happy medium. I don't know. Ch- mm. ch- check in on me next week. I said I said I wouldn't pay for the eighty dollar Pokemon game. I paid for the eighty dollar Pokemon an 80 game. You got eighty dollar Pokemon game. One hundred percent. All right. My, 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 mind you, I got the the Battle Buyers Remorse for that. Anyways, punks. Throw in the goat. Good punks. It's thing. It's some, one of the new games uh, that is out this week, along with Artifact, coming in at nine ninety nine. What is it? You never heard of it? It's Rip Roaring King of the Hill multiplayer. And probably click this video, guys. We can do it that way. It's only got twelve mixed reviews, so I'm guessing you're trying to get to the top. I really wish I could tell you how it played, because they do have a demo right here. They do support network uh, online multiplayer, multiplayer as well. local coop, and full controller support. To which I'll go, hmm, well, I downloaded your demo. Then I CH mod axed, and it's a Unity game. All um, right. Then I launched, zip file, no launched it from a terminal, and it hung at detecting controllers and would not give me any further feedback as to its issue. Therefore, I could not provide said tissue. I made it. Yeah. I made it further into the game than you did, Ven. But that's mm-hmm. probably because I don't have a controller here to plug in ah. for it to fail to detect. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, based. I, I didn't give it a try. Based on the based on the trailer, it seems like yeah, you try to get higher than your other players, and then you try to trigger oh, avalanches shit. on them. Yeah. Go. Go. It, it's it's goat stimulation. Um. <laughs> what? What? So I, I I scrolled down on this page. There's a couple things that stand out to me here. Okay. Number one, apparently they did all their testing on an Intel compute stick in a Skull Canyon Nook for um as 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 well as a razor blade stealth because apparently uh, even on linux apparently this supports the illumination from the razor gaming keyboards i don't know if that's actually true or not hey um selling point rgb bra lifestyle i mean if 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 you're if you're part of that rgb lifestyle this may in fact be the game for you that's 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 the thing though if it works then you can cut that out and put drop that in other games so that would be kind of interesting mm. um that, that that might that might definitely be a thing. I I I think that sort of inter- integration is kind of neat. I won't pay for it, but I think it's neat. <laughs> right. Uh. Um. Yeah. So I think that does it for uh for our steamy news segment. Super sweet. Um, so it, it, so it's so dead. Steamy. Coming up next. Listen, listen, artifact naysayers. We're gonna talk <laughs> about some Vulcan drivers because if you have a video card made in the past, I'm gonna say six years, it probably works with Vulcan. I don't know what to tell you folks. I don't know how Pedro normally starts this. Usually, hello, I'm Pedro, and I use my weird voice, but I'm not doing that, man. 
because it's the time where we shill ourselves out. We thank everyone making the show possible, keeping us loud, live, and independent. How do we do that, Jay Baby? Well, I'm going to do what you didn't do. I'm Pedro. Listen to my weird voice. I'm going to talk about how you can go to patreon.com and click the support button and follow some of the various links through to affiliated stores or or give us Bitcoin or PayPal or whatever. I don't know how this works. I'm Pedro. I don't know how the Internet works. You, I, if, if, if I were less dumb, I'd also tell you to go to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast and join us there where you I, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe something maybe something about IRC. I don't know. You, I, I'm, I'm going to take off the Pedro helmet right now so you can I can tell you about what you can get being a pa- LGC Patreon access to our discord show note access. You can suggest stories that will appear on this very program. Uh, you get your name in the credits. You get access to some uncut VODs three days early. Sometimes there's some good stuff that we slice out just for you folks. Uh, you can play some games with us or you can even buy your way onto the damn show. I don't think we got any uh, any new people to thank this week. No, no more, no, no more, no, fact, no new man. No. What's with you with always new people, man? We have 114 glorious, beautiful party patrons helping us out, kicking us 265 wet, stinky caches that you know we, we, we totally don't use it to buy illegal substances. Like, I don't know, what, what's a good illegal substance, man? Kinder eggs, Kinder, Kinder surprise. eggs. Oh, <laughs> shit. Off a rhinoceros horn. <laughs> what, what, why do, oh, damn, filled, filled with rhino blow. <laughs> Oh, show title. There we go. Wow. Hey, uh, you, you let us do a lot of stuff up to somebody including write that down. Um, Game of Who. We're going to be rolling with that tomorrow. Come check that nonsense out. That's where we do uh, Doctor Who Breakdown. We got a pre-pre super shows and you can custom RSS feed. Throw that in there. There's a video component for our pre-pre super shows. And that is where we attempt to plan things. And join us Wednesday for weekly daily Wednesdays. It's like this without gaming. So, eh, mix and match. But... You crazy psychopaths. It looks like we've actually closed over $260, Jordan. Oh, oh shit. We're going to have to make some t-shirts. I think we're going to have to make some t-shirts. T-shirts. Right now, I would like to introduce uh, Jordan Swing, our new vice president in charge of merchandising. Okay. Here's here's the question. (laughs) What countries can I not source our materials from? I've washed moving my hands on. of this. Moving on. <laughs> moving moving on. NVIDIA drivers. Oh my god. It's the thing that came up. They got the Vulcan, they got the new beta Vulcan drivers out. This is just um this has some uh, proprietary Vulcan extensions for Turing. It's based off of the I wrote this down. Why am I not looking at my notes? Um it's based on the beta from last week. This would be for Linux uh 41518 point not two. Um yeah, it, it, any, anything that's in four uh, in uh, that aforementioned driver minus the not two, um, plus the couple of the Turing extensions for machine learning. Um, I mean, I mean that's 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 pretty much it. If you're if you're not doing any sort of Vulcan development, these things don't really appear don't really apply to you because they'll be folded into later NVIDIA driver releases down the road. One of the things I want to throw in there, um, Tihan, I know you play with the Humbuntu's as well. Um... I tried the 415 earlier this week, and my box, anything that rhymed with Vulcan ate dog shit shortly after that. Well, I've updated to these new drivers here, but I haven't really had a uh, chance to test them out. KWIN isn't crashing, if that's what you're saying I should be looking forward to. Well, you know me and my undying love for KDE. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Real. KDE spelled XFCE. Anyway, that's the thing. Let's speculate on some things, up to and including the, uh, what the Intel executive disclosed about the GPU details and their strategy. Oh, no. That was the card that they made, what, 2006? That was uh, just a yeah. programmable. Uh, anyway, they're throwing yeah, down. Knights, Knights Fi or whatever. Yeah, Knight, something Knight, like Knight, that. All Knights. the Pentium 2s on it or whatever. I thought this was kind of neat. Uh, it it's Knights kind of Corner. interesting because, Knights let's face it, Corner. NVIDIA needs some comp hard and i know what you're saying and you're wrong amd is not competing on the high end with nvidia that was a strategy that they came up with so what do we got uh well they get a nice little mention we get we got to do the uh control f linux to which is say hey man they should mention that ra underscored that linux gaming will be a focus for intel as well Jordan, what, what what does that mean? What could it possibly look be? At, I, l- look into his eyes, man. That, that's a man who that, loves penguins. That 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 is the face of a man who has several children locked in his basement. Um, 
allegedly <laughs> allegedly yeah so uh, this is this is re rosh this creepy photograph um and he g- he gave he gave uh he gave hot hardware a little bit of and an here inter- it is, interview the world exclusive of the new <laughs> <laughs> vga only go fuck yourself uh, <laughs> no uh he he gave uh hot hardware a bit of an interview the links to all this is in our show notes and he doesn't fucking say anything. Nope. Oh, it's like, uh, is, 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 is it going to be programmable? Oh, this is things we're going to be looking into. What's the price? Oh, well, we're taking suggestion for prices. Basically, it boils down to this will exist in and around 2020. That's all we're going to fucking tell you. And we'll let you imagine your perfect GPU so that you get excited and drop money on something that ultimately just It's, it's not like even all that they're going to tell you. It's all that they know at this point. No, I have man. a funny feeling it's not a real product just yet. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm sure. I'm sure it is. I'm sure there are a number of fabs in the Intel secret moon base where they all live with the Nazis from <laughs> Iron Sky. And um, yeah, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm. I'm <laughs> Jeez, uh, I'm 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 sure I'm sure some variation of hardware exists for this. They're just not going to say much because why why tell people things when you can let their imagination do the work and just build up the hype that way? Considering this has been like the the Schrodinger's GPU for the past twenty years now, at least a couple of years they've been hinting and talking about it. I think it'll be fun, but we got to ask the real questions. What is the RGB going to look like? The, in, Intel is very anti RGB. It's oh, going to come on. Come on, it's got to have RGB, man. Or, there, or no, there's, there, there, buy it. There's just going to be B, just for blue. Just blue. It's, it's going to have blue, blue all over it. It's going to like blue. Well, it is team blue. Why team would blue. they need yeah, those it, other colors? Yeah, it might it, it, accidentally it, it, represent AMD or Nvidia. Do you, yeah, you think it, they're going to do any type of dickery? Like, oh, the first version only works with this new slot that we came up with. Ah, absolutely, we've never done that before. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, what I was gonna say was with just a blue, it was just blue LEDs. It looks like your box is emitting Cherenkov radiation. Stay away from it. Hey, uh, Tian, tell us about a benchmark that no one can use, except for yeah. Ben. So yeah, Basemark released their new uh, GPU benchmark with DirectX 12, OpenGL 4.5, and apparently enhanced Linux support. Mm-hmm. Although I did not have much luck with that when I tried and uh, briefly ran it. What the hell's wrong? I went back to Talos Principle. That's the only GPU benchmark that I need. Well, it's got support for Vulkan 1.1. And one thing that we noticed, uh, I was able to uh, give it a shot. The old crusty 980, I managed to get a 2915 on it at 3840 by 2160. But, Jordan, you, uh, before the show, went to uh, test your 1080 Ti. I did. I I I figure you know what? I'll 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 upgrade to the latest Nvidia drivers. I'll go do that stuff. I go to download I go to the basemark to um to download the benchmark. And lo and behold, the link to in in this news post and even the link through their website through products basemark GPU says Linux will be coming spoon. Um close. and the, the, this 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 led to a little bit of debate between Ven and I cuz he's like, "No, I ran it. The link is there." I'm like, "Oh, it's not." And Ven looks and he's like, well, fuck, fuck me sideways. It's not anymore. So I wonder what's wrong with it. I'm curious why, why all of a sudden it is removed despite improved Linux support. Oh, being I'll tell you one of the the wrong question features. is when, when did they remove it? Uh, apparently sometime between two days ago and right now. Yeah. Cause yeah. I, I tried this like on Wednesday or whatever. Right. And it- I tried it um, on 1804 LTS. I put it in with the NVIDIA 980. And it would run the benchmark until it got to the end of it. And it's like, hey, you know what? I'm just going to sit here. I'm frozen. And yeah, I'm frozen. You're going to have to force close this window. But if you do that, I'm not going to tell you I finished. But if you check the results, I gave you a score. Like hidden in a text file somewhere? No, no. It was was in the application itself. It was, it was like, oh, oh well, that, that's the thing. Maybe they're working on that, considering it was the most generic Linux distribution <laughs> that it was hanging on. Oh, wait, it doesn't work. Let's take it down. Yes. Yeah. Listen, it, ru- it runs perfectly fine on OpenSUSE. That's the only thing. That <laughs> but it, what about ours, bro? Paint it, paint it, paint it green. Paint it green. green. Hey, Farrell, how you doing? Clink, clank, bizzard, ding. I'm not making these words up like usual. Wait, is that another Mac OS and Linux clue on the Feral radar? What's that thing playing at? My fucking patience, Feral. That's what this thing's been playing at for years. 
And, well, it's there. As usual, people are speculating about it. So what do you think it's going to be, Empty? Are we getting Hitman, Tomb Raider, or another war, uh, DLC? I mean, a uh, new game for Total War. Well, there's plenty of Total Wars that they haven't ported yet, so my money's on one of those. Uh, I don't know they, if they could save any of the Batmans at this point. They, 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 also, they also straight up already announced Tomb Raider, so... Well, we know Tomb Raider. This is something new, and mm. there has been speculations, like maybe they're finally going to deliver Arkham, or whichever one that completely ate butt and Arkham, hey yeah, i i for one i would be very happy and be very glad to give them money in exchange for a goddamn batman uh that works yeah. some people believe that but hey man some people leave the earth's round i mean what are you gonna do about it uh it's i just want to say like feral feral check this out man i yeah, i think we need to have a talk because you know, we're coming to the end of 2018 we're about to roll into 2019 because that show you do some uh call response type stuff because you know, what's the radar? The radar is a marketing gimmick. All right. It's great. It You use it to generate buzz about upcoming titles. You know what? I've always found it just like a little bit annoying, but it's harmless. It's never hurt anybody. It definitely you, makes some noise on Reddit. You, It has. You, you've watched that slowly decline in its effectiveness, but it does work because we are talking about it right now. 100%. But... As we're closing out 2018, and we have Proton in play now, so here's kind of what I'm looking at. You know, it whatever this game may be, Clink Clink Buzz, which I'm assuming is the working title, it better be something and that has genuine garbage ratings for Proton. And I mean, seriously, better not run well on Proton, because if you hear me out, I don't want you to miss out on my money. I would like to give you money for doing work. And that's going to be kind of difficult if I accidentally fucking buy something with a silver, gold, or platinum rating from Proton DB that just works with Proton. Mm, yeah, that could definitely happen. And the, the, the barrier to doing this now, Jordan, is it's not like we have to install Wine or we have to install Lutris or play on Linux, Wine Tricks. We click a fucking play button, roll the dice, see where it lands, and if it works, it fucking works. Yeah, and and we, we we've been talking about like the um, the viability of the feral business model now for a while, and Pro Proton was the big old monkey wrench that got introduced here. I I I I, I don't I don't know what what whatever this game is. I'm assuming that they had some licensing agreement for this some time ago, so it may have predated Proton, much mm -hmm. like much like the Tomb Raider thing, where they they already they already had the contract locked in for all the Tomb Raider sequels. So we it may very well be the case where Barrel will end up porting something that runs relatively well on Proton because it's for modern games these days it's honestly not that hard. Um, but well, did you see the um, Squeenix the, uh, with the new Hitman? They're like, hey, we didn't have... They put it on their Twitter. They're like, we didn't have to do anything to our code. It just runs under Proton. Yeah. yeah um, Hitman 2. Not that Hitman it, 2, the other one. Yeah, the the, the, <laughs> the new Hitman 2. Like, the, 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 it's like the new Battlefront 2. Um, but yeah, I, I, I mean, and, and here, here, here would be the biggest piss off is if they take a game that has cro that already has multiplayer and then they fuck it up. So now it only works for Linux, Linux, Mac, Mac. Mm. That would that would be the big old fuck you. I don't know. They've they've got source on both sides now. They've got the open source uh, Proton stuff that they can work on, and they've got the engine source. I'm I'm almost of the opinion that their effort might be better directed toward, um, you know, working on Proton instead well, of doing these ports, which no, are gonna. No, here's break one thing that I we genuinely if you're looking years. at the business model right now. Linux now has options with the in introduction of Proton. Now, we all want to support Feral, and we've all, between the three of us, given Feral plenty of money. Mm -hmm. But they release a game. Feral still has a captive audience, and it's called Mac OS X. So, you know, they can put anything <laughs> they want on the radar. The only games they're going to be getting is from a company that ports. And you got to imagine that Mac OS X sales probably make up more than Linux. Probably. Here, here's Double here's the other thing. Three times. Here, here's it's the other thing too much. is that there's straight up nothing nothing stopping Valve from producing a OS 10 compatible build of Proton. I mean, it exists like you, Wine for Mac exists already, and 
You can you can well, don't you can they have, have to do their they have to do the Vulcan to metal thing, mm-hmm. which is the only right. Part of that. um, little... Yeah, so you you you'd have to you'd have to pipe DXVK through Molten VK, um, <laughs> and they would have to do it Just knowing full well commands. the next generation of whatever Mac that resembles a laptop computer is probably not going to be x86. Probably probably not. Apple so will do everything in their power to lock them out anyway. All right. Yeah. So it, 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 it's it's a it's a big mystery. We'll figure it out later. Feral, stop using the radar. <laughs> and, and instead, maybe maybe use a time tested and honored method of communication, Jason, like Momoa, what email. Are you doing? Email. Hush, hush, Conan the Barbarian. Okay. Now is not your time. Fine. Um. So um, there, there, uh, GitHub exists for this. <laughs> uh, it is from from Ned Breck. Uh, it's called Atlantis. This is a play by email strategy game that apparently has been in development for about from 1998. It's based off of an older play by email game called the o- URL to Yahoo groups. Give that away. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it would be worse if it was GeoCities because that shit doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> work anymore <clears throat> yeah um, in its defense yeah. the yahoo group has not been updated in at least a week yeah but i mean like it, it's a play by email strategy game there's like a wish slash tk gui done in tcl for it um <sighs> yeah i i mean i mean i guess if if you really want to roll that way you can there's literally nothing stopping you this it's it's kind of interesting because like there's nothing inherently wrong with using email as like a transport for strategy games especially for stuff that you'd have to like mull over there's there's a long slow, tradition of play by mail slow strategy but, games. But, okay. but i but i mean like this, this this is a thing like maybe it's a game you check in on maybe once every couple days give your orders and then forget about it like there, like, like i said there there is a long and story tradition of strategy gaming and role playing by mail this is just an extension of it it's open source so you can build it and i, it I think there's a long so history blind. of it but we're also talking about a time see we're living in a time where if i send you a text message and you don't get back to me within 35 40 seconds I'm, just well, what the fuck bad. are you doing like where are you at? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that that that's definitely a thing. But some some people some people like the the slow method. They like taking the long path around. Mm. I don't. I don't know. It's available. It's a thing. Um, if you if you if you're super into play by email or if you this thing sort of interests you, and hell, even Civilization has supported that. Even the Linux ports for a while. Now. I was about to make a free Civ mm-hmm. joke in there. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm I'm talking about like the Aspire Civ games actually support play by email. Yeah. Yeah. That that's wow. a thing. That that, that 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 has been cooked into the Civ DNA <laughs> for many many Forever. many moons. Literally, yeah. like, like like I said, long and storied history. It's not it's not a thing that will go away just because there's a very low barrier for entry. Do you support email? Mm. Yes. Okay. Uh, Project Oreos has a not Thanksgiving update for 2018. Yes. Periodically we talk about this project, but they go they go quite a while between updates. Uh, Zorios is the uh, open source implementation of the Aurora engine from Bioware. It's been powering games like Neverwinter Nights, Knights of the Old Republic, even even the first Witcher game, um, which will be the first native. Once that gets working, it's going to be the first native Witcher game to run on Linux. First and only. <laughs> Hashtag virtual programming. Um, but but anyways, uh, they have they have an update. Um, and basically what they're doing is because they have so many games they have to make work uh, with this engine, there's a lot of development in just like un- unpacking uh, graphical formats and lighting formats and audio formats, uh, lo- lots of development of probes. And this is just stuff that needs to be done before actual work on the engine can continue. There's still, at, at the moment, uh, I checked their progress. You can get like, you can have things show up in the game. You can get to some of the menus, some of the character selection screens, but that's about it. This is this is going to be a long term project, a la Open Morrowind, and it's not as high profile, so it's not going to move as fast. Um, did I write any notes? Um, yeah, that, that, and that, that's basically that's basically it. Uh, it's it's chugging along at its own pace, and we'll get playable shit when it happens. I'm looking forward to playing Dragon Age Origins through this. That the would be thing I, neat. The thing I definitely noticed from the change log is that they are just battling midware or middleware. They, they're different. They're decoding three different types of uh, sound font from different sound libraries. I'm just like, oh, this is this is the curse of middleware in open yep. source projects right here. Yeah, they'll but get it, through it. It's great that we have projects like this just for like future preservation of things. You know, it's going to be portable. We won't have to rely on scum or emulation and stuff like that. So I'll probably get it integrated into scum eventually. Yeah, it'll get. How, how, 
Hell, if you, if you, <laughs> your your only hope of getting getting these games running on those ARM based MacBooks is stuff like this. So, oh, uh, we, we got a little update uh, for Linux users. A word of caution: Unreal Marketplace support doesn't give a singular fuck about you. Yeah, dude went to the marketplace. He's like, hey, man, some things are on sale. I'm going to pick some things up for my game. He got the content, and, well, turns out you can't import that from Linux with a Linux client with the... Mm. Yeah, so straight up, you need an asset downloader that is not available on Linux to utilize the assets that you purchase on the Unreal Store. It is now, available th on Linux through Wine, I believe. I don't... I don't <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that's some next level development. I need to run my IDE through Wine because it doesn't. Right. It's not so I can completed. download my resource. Oh, but that's that's the thing. This is like a, this seems like a crazy significant oversight. I guess I guess this is a direct consequence though of Epic leaving Linux support primarily to the com community. Apparently, they don't expect people to want to give them money for stuff that they put on sale oh, on their website. Right, we do support Linux. I forgot about that. Oops. You're like, listen, we released the source code. Fuck off. Shoo. Right. And, 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 and again, like if uh, the, the, this is a hundred percent like, oh yeah, people like there are, there are, there, this is Epic going, oh yeah, there is a small subset of our user base that actually develops on Linux. Whoops. Right. Whoops. And then, oh, uh oh, people noticed this on Reddit. Maybe we should give the guy his money back and change our verbiage. I don't know. Yeah. I thought this put Epic in a very particular um, queasy spot because you're 100%, I'm sorry. I mean, you can say otherwise. Epic gives it negative fucks about Linux. Uh, hi, Tim. But they really like money. So they're like, oh, what do we do? Uh, I like money too. They ended up giving uh, the lad back his what stinky caches, but in a very condescending, like, oh, this time, this time, we'll, we'll give you a refund. Well, not Maybe. obligated to, right. but because we're I'm, nice guys. Yeah. <laughs> because the PR shitstorm would be immense. <laughs> we're going to give you your money back, and we're going to pretend to be nice about it. Hey, gentlemen, yeah. do you hate yourself? Because I got just the yeah. tool from you. This oh, comes yeah. from one of our beautiful executive producers, Arthur, and it's like, yo, check this out. KOTOR. Well, then that doesn't sound like it, it makes me want to hate .js. Oh, fuck. Now I hate myself. <laughs> um, it's, it's a remake of the Odyssey game engine that powered KOTOR 1 and 2, written in, you guessed it, fuck-mothering JavaScript, people. This is a thing that only a psychopath, uh, somebody worthy of respect, would try to do. And guess what? It kind of works. You know, your things like displaying in-game menus, your models, your sound scripting, and all, they somewhat work. And I just love the idea of starting with a KOTOR engine, starting my journey with NPM fucking install. Man, that's the way to get Whoa. shit done. Tia and you have Especially some games. Oh, yeah. Games especially are. That's Node.js's bread and butter. All I can say is uh, no, no Wasm? What, what is this? What kind of game is this that doesn't use WebAssembly? <laughs> Aim. Yeah, <clears throat> and, oh, I, I, and they wrapped it in electron to make it even, you know, even more efficient. They're like, hey, let's just uh, wrap it up in a Chrome instance. Boom, make it happen. I, I mean, yeah, for 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 people who find that the Sorios development cycle is a little too slow, oh, this man. thing exists. I mean, he, he even calls them out in the influence and credits. Uh, so appar apparently, a good chunk of this stuff was lifted from Sorios, or at least inspired by. I'm not. Uh, I don't object to this in principle. I mean, no, I, I like the. I, I love the hackery of this. I love being able no. to sit, knowing that there's somebody sitting around who's like, "Fuck it, why not?" Not, 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 not even that. Let's just see. playing. Just pl I, I like the idea of like playing full 3D games in a browser. I think that's super cool. I 100% support the web as platform movement that Mozilla's trying to do mm -hmm. because why not? We, we we all have fast internet connections now. You can, you can quote unquote stream apps as the XKCV comic goes. Um, so some something like this is entirely valid, and I'm cool. I'm curious to see if this actually goes anywhere because it would be kind of nice to play Kotor in the browser. In a browser, yeah, they're gonna have performance issues up and down the row, but if they can get past that, hey. That, well, I mean, like that, that's why you use Wasm. It also sounds like a bit of nightmare fuel, but bunch of other... good on you. All right. Coming up next, we're gonna take a deep dive back into LucasArts. We're gonna we're gonna throw Lucas some chairs at both. Yeah, it was LucasArts. Right. Wait, yes, yeah, uh, films. Uh, w w some something Lucas related. Anyways, Double George five. Lucas That's... is gonna come on the show and tell us about Full Throttle Remastered. Stay tuned. 
Grease your legs up and try to squeeze into those assless chaps. It's time for the chairquisition this week. Or this is this is where we take a game. We tell you if it launches, how well it performs, how the graphics are, and how it controls. Then we rate it on a scale from one to four chairs on a pass fail category or basis for all those categories. And then step two, we tell you how, what we thought of the game. We rate that arbitrarily on a scale from one to four chairs. Uh, there's no pass fail. There's only fail. Uh, this week, we're taking a look at Full Throttle Remastered from Double Fine Productions and Shiny Shoe. It's done on, I think it's it's a modified version of the Scum Engine. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. Send us some hate mail. You're wrong. Uh, you can pick it up for about 15 bucks. Uh, originally released by LucasArts in 1995, Full Throttle is a classic graphic adventure game from industry legend Tim Schafer telling the story of Ben Throttle, butt-kicking leader of the biker gang, the Polecats. Uh, we, we bought this for ourselves, so we don't have to disclose anything. Suck it, Tim, even though you gave us space space for free secretly that one time. I don't know how that worked. <laughs> like four uh, copies of it. I know, right? Um, so let, let, let's let's get into this. How, how did it run on your end, uh, then? Testing it uh, for the beautiful people, for the masses on 1804 LTS, taking that one for the team. Um, Ryzen 7, 1700, 980, 16 gigajoules of RAM, all that fun stuff. No issues. I mean, I kind of expect that from Double Fine. Going to run out of the box, which it did. Performance wise, you really got two options. Uh, I mean, it's going to run solid 60 at 720p or whatever it expands to, which I'm guessing is 2160p on this end. Um, that's about it. First controls, you point, click, and you kind of pray during the combat sessions, man. Um, nothing to complain about, except like during this part, which you're seeing on the screen right now. It's called driving. Oh, fuck. fuck that part. How about Fedora? How's that working for you? Well, I tried it on two different Fedoras. Uh, on Fedora 28, it launches, and on Fedora 29, it launches. Um, performance at 1080. So I tried this on the um, on both the R7 2700U with the Vega 10 GPU and uh, the i7 6700K with the GTX 1080 Ti. Both are hold 60 um, at the maximum resolutions. I don't think uh, the it's uh, the all the graphics or whatnot are as remastered at UHD because I definitely saw some pixels when I maximized the screen. Um, and yeah, like uh, like like Wonder Boy uh, Dragon's Trap, you can switch between old and new graphics on the fly. Uh, the audio also switches from uh, stereo to mono too. Control wise, yeah, you click on stuff. I was almost tempted to ding at a chair because in windowed mode, if you play it as presented. There's some stuff that you just can't click on until you full screen because you need to be over that exact right pixel. Talk about that a little bit more. Also, yeah, those bike segments can eat a bag of dicks. Yeah, I, I'm very familiar with that cinematic. <laughs> uh, I'll, 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 I'll give it four cheers, though. Empty. Yeah, so um, I ran the Steam version. I also ran the GOG version through Lutris, and both of them ran flawlessly on my... Uh, Kubuntu 1804 LTS with the uh, Ryzen 1700X and the 1060. No problems at all in terms of uh, getting it to run. No problems at all in terms of the graphics, they, or the performance, I should say. Um, how could a game like this not do 60 frames per second? Life finds a way, man. I mean, the cinematics are 48 FPS. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's what they were rendered at what do you what do you want the um update here actually um they did a really good ted or not ted talk a uh, gdc talk oliver who was the lead programmer for double fine um and the the talk is not specifically about full throttle i think it's about um day of the tentacle and um what's the other one that they did grim fandango but he also talks a lot about the technology that they use in their modified scum to have the old version of the game and the updated graphics all running at the same time, which is kind of the, I don't know, that's the whole point of the remastered edition. Mm -hmm. And yeah, as far as controls go, it's a point and click adventure game. Like uh, if we need to explain that to you, then you're probably not going to like this game. On a scale of one to four. Yeah. Oh, I would totally give it four. There we yeah, go. No doubt. We got it. On Mazel here. tov. Yeah. All right. Well, there there you go. It, it works extra great on Ubuntu. Works pretty well on Fedora. Good times. Up, up next, Ben, did you have fun? Hey, man. Check it out. Let's go all the way back to the Dark Ages, the DOS Ages, even 1995, where I still had a DOS partition. And most importantly, I had a copy of Full Throttle. That was the thing. It wasn't my first adventure game. I was never really into the genre. The one that got me hooked originally was this... Thing called Phantasmagoria. 
And I was like, all right, maybe maybe there's something to this uh, point and click adventure shit. And I decided to have a go with this. Uh, however, this game, unlike Phantasmagoria, didn't feature the cringe worthy, cringe inducing stuff that made you want to close your eyes and just click through blindly the FMV shit. Uh, no, this is animation. It was new hotness. And even way back then, this was also a really simple game, even at the time, and it was wicked linear. A simple, simple person like me could figure it out. Uh, I don't remember much from my initial playthrough, but I do recall it being entertaining. I, You know, you can kind of go back and like, I remember having a good time with this. So if we're going to fast forward 25 years, here we are again. I'm sitting here with an 8-core, 16-thread CPU, 3D graphics, more RAM than my PC had hard drive space. And let's give it a go, man. Out of the box, it's your standard double fine remastered. You get your new graphics, restored sound, and sometimes, like this, a commentary track. That's what it delivered. It sports all three of those. And they didn't dick around with the gameplay, as is tradition. So what am I looking for uh, for my $14.99? Man, give me some entertainment, some fun. Probably not nostalgia, because... You know, I got to go with entertainment. I'm kind of immune to the nostalgia bullshit, but it did manage to deliver the entertainment. Uh, even with the hella obtuse puzzles, man, those were things for a different time. And that ass eating combat that you've seen me fuck around with and get killed to death repeatedly, not really killed, but delayed. Uh, I managed to cock around for about two solid hours. And I only had the inter had to ask the internet twice, how do I unfuck this situation? Because I couldn't figure it out. Maybe I, I, I could have most definitely figured it out if I didn't have access to the internet and fuck all to do when I was a teenager. Um, at the end of the day, take that shot. Was it worth that $14.99? Was that trip worth it? Kind of yes and no. I'm going to say yes for being able to revisit a classic. And I really, really fucking enjoyed being able to switch between the original and this new hotness. I mean, I liked looking, you know, what they did creatively to expand it from a 4x3 to a 16x9. Well, they had to add some shit in. And I'm going to say yes again for including commentary. So I learned things like uh, the sound designer had to drive with a microphone hanging out of his fucking car in order to get those bump sounds. Uh, but I'm going to say no for not fixing the FSM damn awful combat because that's where I tapped out. What you're watching right here. I just got sick of it. I was like, no more. I'm done. I'm done with my trip. So, you know, it's kind of a mixed bag, but I'm going to say I definitely had two chairs worth of fun with it. I'll say check it out. Definitely if it's on sale. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I, I never played full throttle back in the 90s. I, I remember having a friend, uh, Nikita, who was obsessed with this, and he told me all about it. Um, and now that I get a chance to play it, I mean... I, I don't I don't have the nostalgia associated with this, and it's just another point and click adventure. It's it's Seinfeld syndrome, right? Where Seinfeld was very revolutionary for its time, but then everything afterwards takes from that and riffs on it and improves it. So I I'm looking looking back, I can see I can see some of the strengths, but it's not like mind blowing or revolutionary. I like the soundtrack and the remastered FMVs look good. Although there's one part in, right at the beginning where they drive over uh, what's his name's car, and I'm like, wow, this straight up looks like something out of South Park. Um, and uh, my one my one real issue with with the with the gameplay here is that it's not necessarily hard to figure out what you need to do, but sometimes the game fights you on make, letting you do it. So two examples of this stand out um, right at the very beginning. Siphoning gas. I understood what I needed to do. I was presented with a hose, a gas can, and I have a thing where I can suck. I can put my mouth on things. So clearly this game wants me to siphon gas from this vehicle that I have right here. How I do that? I have to look that up because apparently uh, playing it in a windowed mode, getting the gas can requires you to mouse over the exact pixel in order to do that. And I had to, I had to full screen and look for it after like driving myself nuts trying to like how how do how do I siphon gas? I know I need to do this, um, and I, I eventually settled on how to do it. The second one was uh, finding what's her face in the dumpster because I knew that area existed. I knew I probably needed to go there, given that all the other areas didn't have anything for me. But unless I moused over that exact pixel that let me go behind the bar, it would not let me progress, and that was really annoying. Um, beyond that, yeah, the the, the story is fun. I can I can see it building up to stuff. There's there's clearly some very good writing here. Um, it's very '90s kids friendly, but they 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 do what they can do. Uh, I, the commentary was interesting. 
And yeah, I, I'm with Ven. The bite combat in this can just eat shit. I can't figure out the special sauce. I wailed on some guy's head with the fucking tire iron, and then I died. I'm not sure how that exactly worked. I'm w whatever. That's that's where I tapped out after about eight tries of this. I'm just like, no, I don't care enough. I'll give it a solid two. It if you haven't, if you're into graphical adventure games and you've never played Full Throttle for some reason, maybe look at picking this up because it's it's a very high quality remaster, but. That, that's about all I can say for it. Empty, you love this game. Go suck its cock. Oh, I, I do love this game. Um, I got this in a combo pack with Loom and uh, The Dig, I believe, sometime back in the 90s on CD-ROM, and it was by far the greatest of the LucasArts games. And I would say it's probably better than my favorite Sierra game, Space Quest. I'm sorry, Roger Wilco. But then... Um, out badasses you to put it mildly um <clears throat> that said this is definitely a 90s adventure game if you didn't like 90s adventure games you're probably not gonna like this and uh if you don't know what a 90s adventure game is you're probably not gonna like this either because the form has not aged very well um if if that doesn't mean you can't appreciate this game. Go on YouTube and watch a playthrough of it. Just watching a playthrough is amazing because it's such a cinematic game with great music, great voice acting, a good story. I mean, they literally have Mark Hamill as the bad guy. Yes, you, you uh, this is something we be... talked about earlier is listening to the Joker throughout the entire game. It's Rip Burger, Rip Burger, yeah, yes. Right. Yeah, it's just so well done. And the, you know, the production back, especially in the 90s, the production values on this game were just, you know, ludicrous. Um, it wasn't available on floppies because it was talky. The whole thing was talky. I mean, basically, there's like movie segments spread out through the whole thing. Um, but, I saw you an know, interesting if, thing when they were talking about how they had to do the game and moving the pixels back in the day. That's how they got away with it. They're like, we could do a lot of animation if we do a bunch of jump cuts. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, yeah. That, that, and doing that, that stuff is, like very... only updating parts of the screen mm -hmm. and all sorts of mm -hmm. tricks that they had to do back then. Oh, oh yeah. J jump cuts is very much the the crux of the cinematic direction here. Is yeah. But it's a great game. It's a lot of fun if you like adventure games. If you've played through it, you know, ten times like I have, it's always fun to go back and just like smash through it because you can go through the whole game in five hours if you know what you're doing. It's not. It, it would be less than that if there weren't so many like cinematic sequences interspersed through the whole thing but that's really the fun of it is that it's it's kind of like kind of like playing a movie except that it's not terrible phantasmagoria fmv it's um, not david cage insanity either <laughs> yeah well it's it's lighthearted. it's a bit of a romp um all the pieces are there it's it's a great you know 90s adventure game mm. it's nothing more than that though all right, get us the hell out of here. All right. Coming up next, we talk about why Pedro can't AMD and also answer questions with single syllables. And we made it. We finished. Not everything's uh, on We fire. didn't do the hate mail yet. Just a few things are left. Oh, there's a new hate mail in here. It's, 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 it's kind of brilliant because we're doing the show. And uh, we're about to do the hate mail segment, as Empty's pointed out twice. And uh, are, are, but are we going to do the hate mail segment? No, we're not. No, we're not officially. We're not. But if you would hate like to not do the hate mail segment, you can head over to contact. It's on linuxgamecast.com. Fill it out. You're not a bot. Let's see. Am I bot this evening? No, I am not a bot. Pick your topic. We have LGC weekly, weekly, daily Wednesdays. If you'd like to send some keys or Jordan might be able to throw some relationship device in your general direction. It'll be a little terrifying. It'll be a little horrifying, but Best of all, it will be fun. So, Jordan, what do we have up this week? Up first, we have uh, something, as I open up the link, uh, from Ertain, uh, talking about the Nerd Jeopardy thing we did last night on the Friday Food Bar. You might be able to catch the VOD of that eventually. Um, this is a great idea, Ertain says, provided that Ven or whoever can write enough questions. This will be a nice addition to the shows provided by LGC. Mr. Venstone, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. About qu writing questions. All right. How, how, yeah, how we evil do questions? I, yeah. we can oh, make actually, our actually, words. Yes. That, that, that might be a thing. Submit your questions. Oh, we, we, we could try that. 
Yeah. We'll take that, the Pepsi that, challenge with that. You want to throw it down? Yeah. That, that, may, may, maybe maybe message us some uh, questions on Patreon, but then Ven has to Trebek it because he would know the answers already. Well, th that was kind of the thing. We, I didn't know how many people because we were just testing the layout last night. Yeah. And ultimately, yes, it'd be better if I just ran the fucking board. So I couldn't read any of the questions, which kind of mm -hmm. sucked. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so not play, just run the board. Be Run Alex the board, Trebek. read the questions, yeah. Trebek at yeah. the and Alex Paul Trebek Smith. by way of Vanna White. Gotcha. Goddamn right. All right. Damn keyboard Zella. Up next, we got uh we got members. So remember where you came from, says Fox Cow, not Mr. Fox Dog, it's Mr. Fox Cow. Mm. Hi guys, love the show, support you on Patreon, and blah 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 period all three of you guys have high-end systems that can handle anything thrown at them and it's a good problem to have one element i missed from early lgc is calculator gaming out of necessity pedro bore the cross for some for quite some time perhaps in the future maybe once a week one of the three hosts can take the, their turn reviewing the game of the week on some old hardware just an idea since not everyone in the gaming realm is in the same hardware strata well, I actually, 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 I took uh, that bit of advice. Get better hardware. What's wrong with you, person? Hell, I, I, I mean, I mean, I mean, I test, I tested uh, the game we did this week on the laptop. Periodically, I'll do that as well. I got, I got uh, three systems I can test on. Mm -hmm. One with a low-end NVIDIA GPU and a low-end AMD CPU. Uh, one with a mid-range in, in, in AMD CPU and GPU, and then high-end Intel CPU and high-end NVIDIA GPU. So, I try, I try to spread it out whenever I can. Pedro's got sounds a gang like of laptops. Like you're volunteering. And uh, the, the only thing about a Steam box is anytime he plays a Unity title, it freezes. So that that's not a good thing. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm down with it. I don't think anybody's going to. I think Jordan's got the right take on it. I don't think anybody's going to intentionally inflict. I mean, I'd have to go get hardware. I already have a low-end system. I have the cheapest Ryzen 7 you can get. And I have a 980. I, I mean, you, you could also try and swing it with, like, the, the old AMD quad core and, like, the 450, maybe. <laughs> okay. I don't, I don't know about the 450, but maybe yeah, maybe right. an AMD card wouldn't be a bad idea or two. Maybe. maybe. AMD cards, uh, that might be an interesting take, trying to talk myself into that. I'm going to say anybody who's looking to, like, you, you don't need the new hotness. You Like, it for how much does a 1060 cost, empty? 220, 250. Okay, so like two in the 250 range, you can get a used 980 Ti, which will match blow to blow with a 1070. Mm -hmm. According according it's to that one, used twice anyways. as much power. No, that was matching yeah. blow to blow with a 1080. That's why I said 1070. Yeah. Um. But I I, I mean yeah. And the 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 other the other thing too is it's kind of a goof as well because if the game performs like crap on our systems, mm -hmm. then it has it has some problems. It has some serious fundamental problems that wouldn't necessarily be revealed from playing it on a low end system because it just be you wouldn't you wouldn't necessarily know what whether to blame the game or the hardware. Here we can clearly blame the game, but we'll definitely talk to some people. Uh, we're always going to keep the hardware mixed and matched because um, mm -hmm. none of us have the well you. You and Pedro have the new hotness with the video. Well, not even the new hotness anymore because the 20 series that are out. You got old decrepit shit now too. Yes. Uh. No, no gaming capable laptops because that seems like that would be a. Good oh, I also I also have that one laptop with the uh, i with the mobile i7 and the 960M. We could throw that. That might I, not be a bad idea. I think like the ultimate thing we want to watch out for is not to become like hardware benchmarking type shit. You know, I, I, I was going to ask, do we do we need to create the Linux game cast for Onyx test suite? <laughs> the L Linux LTPS. Cast suite. Yes, LTPS. No, no, we're, we're, we're straight up going to call it the Linux game cast for Onyx test suite. Yes. Suck it, Laravel. <laughs> no. Yes. Oh, maybe. I don't yes. know. I'm furiously looking for this because on that bombshell, let's cue the music. You can always find us around 9.30 Eastern Standard Moon Time. That's where we're bringing you this fantastic bit of distortion on YouTube and on Twitch. As long as this thing keeps working, who knows? Anyway, I'm Vince Stone. Find me on Twitter. And uh, yeah, I'm there because Google is intent on killing all of their good products. Next, next on the chopping block, it's Google Drive, and that's Rip LGC at that point. Yep. I'm Jordan Spung. You can find me literally drowning in PC hardware at the Burning Fool on Twitter, at Frojo at mass.linuxgamecast.com, or for now, plus Jordan Spung at Google Plus. Yeah, and I'm Mike T. Han. 
can't find me on Twitter. And, well, you can find me on Google Plus, but I haven't logged into that since they announced it was dead. <clears throat> Good luck finding me. He's at the real leprechaun on Twitter. Oh. Well, that's right. I do have a Twitter, don't I? See, I know that. I, I, right? No, I, I mean, I mean, I mean. Yeah. Hey, look at these slapdash credits. Boom. <laughs> yeah. Straight, no, like straight up next week, Empty's going to get like shot because someone chal- did a challenge accepted and hunted him down. Oh, man. Tracked him down. Yes. You can't find me. <laughs> you, you think? Oh, yeah. Oh, we're on Mastodon, too. Mast.linuxgamecast.com. Yes. Yeah. Go on Mastodon every once in a while. I haven't really I liter- there too much. I literally go on Mastodon to post when I'm starting to stream. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's I I I I have, I have a problem with juggling social networks in that I don't. And you gotta understand just... Empty's next level, like Steve points out, he's not in the witness protection program. He's fucking on it. Yeah. Yeah. He's 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 riding on all those protected witnesses. <laughs> Got himself a saddle and everything. This is true. And a, and a riding crop. It's very kinky. <laughs> and the spurs. Don't, don't forget chaps. the spurs. Chaps are by definition assless. I say that despite having said assless chaps in the chair position. <laughs> <sighs> oh, man. <clears throat> we made it. We're not completely on fire. But Mr. Yeah. Fox, just Foxy, he's a little fucked up. M- M- Mr. Fox, dog, cow, bird, lizard, Dinosaur. bull person. We'll see you next week. Well, no, he's the M horse dog now because he puts on the horse head. Mr. 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 Fox horse. Five dudes.